welcome back everybody. In this video we're going to look at Dreadfleet scenery. So uh, like when I assembled everything, I wanted to assemble this stuff first so that I could play some of the scenarios. Here's what everything looks like done. I also did all the tokens and uh, so I'm going to walk you through the steps. So first off, um, got some paints here. So let's uh, take a look at the order. So the first thing I did is I painted the um, the rock area, so that's these ones. So I started with the shard and granite, uh, dry brushed with tasseled ochre, a little bit of stippling of Gretchen green, some Thraka green wash in the uh, crevices, and uh, fortress gray dry brushing, astro astronomicon gray as well, some skull white on the edges, and then bad at black on the edges as well. Um, this here is for the castle, so base coat of chaos black, uh, dry brushed dark angels green. Hawk turquoise and then skull white just on the uh, crenellations, so that's the edges, the top edges. Um, and then for the uh, lava one, there's one island with a bit of lava in it. Base coat mechorite red, a stippling of blaze orange, Idean dark sun in the center of the little pockets, a little bit of skull white, and then on the top peaks of everything, some chaos black. And then for the uh, bone areas, I use the uh, Kemri Brown for the base coat, Devil and Mud Wash, and then the Reaper Bone Triad was used to uh, highlight everything. This here was used for the inside of the eyes of some of the skulls. You'll see that. So the uh, Deep Ocean Marine Teal Surf Aqua. Um, let's see what I got here. So this is for the uh, the sails and their shipwrecks. So that was Denob Stone Base, Ogre and Flesh Wash, and some Thraka Green just to give some uh, uh, seaweed and... Uh, mold sort of a look. Um, this stormy gray triad was used a bit on the uh, the wind token and the the dwarf shipwreck was this mahogany brown rust brown and I used a bit of uh, silver I didn't show it here sorry um, some uh, meth uh, mithril silver to highlight that and uh, Gretchen green was used a bit on some of the sea monsters um, and then I have my blue uh, mixture here, and that was what was used on the uh, the, uh, the the water areas, and then actually in between here, um, a mixture of Thraka green and Bata black watered down was used as a wash. So these are almost all the exact same uh, paint schemes that was used in the White Dwarf. So if you have a copy of that, um, I'm basically following that. So I started out with a uh, a brown spray paint. Um, the white dwarf one I think you use black but I use dark brown flat flat brown and it's kind of like a scorched brown color and I sprayed all the tokens and stuff as well so these ones here um, oh I you know I didn't show you the colors it's the same colors as the other dreadfleet uh, gold so that's the uh, the scorched uh, scorched metal from Reaper base which is kind of like tin bits and then uh, GW golds okay so here's a uh, Idean Dark Sun over top of the um, Taos, or sorry, the uh, Shard and Granite. So you can see it's nice of a, a yellowy sort of thing. This isn't your typical rock kind of a color. Um, I guess the idea here is that, you know, it's uh, rocks exposed to the sea air and there's lots of mold and stuff growing on it. And then I've got Gretchen Green here, so that's stippled sort of all over the place and uh, just kind of give it a bit of a variation color. And uh, I would say this is probably a different way than I normally do things, but I really liked how how many different colors you end up within things here. So you can see the the stippling is a little bit uneven, but there's going to be lots of layers on top of this. And working my way up. Okay, so as you can see, I did the rocks and all of the all the pieces at the same time, and uh, this whole set of scenery paints up pretty quick. Scenery in general paints up pretty quick, so not a big deal. Uh, Fortress Grey here, and I'm just kind of stippling, dry brushing all the skulls just to bring them out a little bit. And you can see the different areas that have skulls. I should have filled that in, but, well, didn't. And this one here, this one's not as bad. The other one's kind of noticeable, especially because I'm doing so much dry brushing. Okay, and so that's uh, all the top layers of the, uh, the different greys of dry brushing on there. And uh, looks pretty cool, I think. I'm pretty happy with how that all turned out. And uh, so this now I'm going with Badab Black just in the edges. And you can see some of the green left over there. Okay, so now what I'm doing is a Chaos Black Undercoat. And that's these two castle pieces here. 
And then Dark Angel's Green Dry Brush, trying to uh, stay away from the, the rocks. So by definition, then I'm kind of getting more dark down here and more green up there, just by trying to stay away. And that's the Hawk Turquoise. Uh, you can start seeing that build up. This is a bit of scab red that'll be um, washed, I believe, with Devlin mud and highlighted with uh, some blood red. I, I think I left that out of the paint scheme as well. Uh, that's just a bit of uh, Kemery brown on the measuring device and as well on all of the, the base. Now, I kind of did a, a messed up here. I did all of the shipwrecks Kemery brown thinking that I'd end up doing them more brown, but uh, I liked. I ended up liking how the White Dwarf did it, them uh, very bright, so I did them, basically had to repaint them all with a uh, denim stone. But anyways, the all the the skull, or these skeletal type things, they were done with Kemery Brown. And same here, so this is uh, your basic gold and Kemery Brown on anything that's going to be bone. There we go. And now I'm just dry brushing this. Uh, what did I dry brush? I think that was with the uh, Denub stone. And I ended up not doing a whole lot with this. I liked it sort of how it was. And uh, this is actually Reaper uh, black ink. Um, it's more like an ink than a wash, but uh, any watered down black just sort of to get right in there. And I'm doing the all of the, the water areas at the same time. And as you can see, I'm kind of working from the general towards the details, so there's less dry brushing on the water, so I decided to do it after the stone. And I'm going to try to avoid getting blue on the stones, and then there's no dry brushing on any of the shipwrecks, so it's not going to interfere with the previous steps. Just a bit of uh, gold there. It's just the GW gold. And that's the, uh, that's the blood red I was talking about. And working up the dry brushing there. So that's just the different uh, blues. And that's my Bad Hat Black and uh, Thraka Green wash on there. And after that was dry, I did a bit of the Skull White dry brushing on the tips of the waves. And by doing it all at the same time, in theory, I'm getting a nice even color to everything. Okay, now, now I'm doing the, uh, this is Denub Stone on all the shipwreck sort of areas, and I'm doing the uh, the beasts as well. And uh, there's my wash over top of them. And, uh, yeah, so I'm working it up. This here with a Devlin Mud wash. And you can see that's what it looks dry, so I'm going to do a little bit of touching up with the Denub Stone. Now this here, actually, I really liked how this turned out. This is just uh, Gretchen Green on uh, Denub Stone and then given a Devlin Mud Wash, and it just really brought the colors out. I liked that quite a lot. Uh, this guy here, all I did was I kind of painted the top half Denub Stone, did a bit of uh, Gretchen Green in the middle, and let that blend into the blue that I already had there. This one here, instead of doing the uh, Griffin Sepia wash, I used Ogre and Flesh, and so it gave a bit more of a fleshy tone. And uh, here I go working up. The, so these are the um, the Reaper uh, Aged Bone Triad. Uh, that's kind of my go-to for bone. Um, you can use uh, Bleached Bone and uh, some of the GW stuff as well. And working all the way up the highlight there, all the way up to the uh, the Weathered Bone highlight. Okay, so here's the uh, the Thraka green that I mentioned, so just kind of blobbing it here and there. And I'm going to be touching up some of the areas as well. Okay, so this is the deep ocean stuff in the eyes. And uh, I actually kind of ended up uh, fudging that a bit. I, I It ended up not drying because I put it in too thick. And then I just kind of bl wet blended everything in there and then blobbed a whole bunch of white and hoped that it stayed white. And it kind of worked. But if I was to do it again, I would probably actually suggest starting with the white and then working outwards. Uh, I think that might be easier. Okay, so here's this lava, and I followed the, the directions in the, the, the white dwarf, and uh, it worked quite well. The only thing I would suggest uh, is I didn't quite understand what they are saying when they said you know, painting the top of the bubbles. Um, the bubbles, they kind of have inverse. So 
the, here I am kind of dry brushing the yellow on the top thing, and that's what I'm supposed to do. But in fact, the the red goes on everything, and then the yellow is going to go sort of inside, right in the vil middle, and then a little bit of white, and then the black is going to cover up all of these peaks. So I fix it up later. So here's what it looks like when I fixed it. So there's the yellow inside, and the idea being you know the top parts are cooling, so they turn black, and the center parts they're white, so they're the hottest. And uh, it turned out quite nice, even though it's you know it's a little bit sloppy. Um, there's the black on top, and uh, I think I like how that turned out. Okay, so here's this uh, ghost kind of guy, and uh, so like I said, um, Gretchen Green was in the middle there, and just when I dry brushed it all with denim stone, it kind of brought everything out. Uh, this guy here looks like these are leeches of some sort, uh, I'm guessing, so I painted them just chaos black. And uh, here I am with the... Uh, this is with the, those uh, rust colors, so this is the chestnut brown, I believe it is. And I'm going to just kind of stipple that all the way up to rust. Uh, Mechorite red with a thick coat of... Uh, actually, no, it's nothing yet. Sorry, Mechorite red highlighted with uh, blood red and then given a, a bow red wash. That's all that was. And there's those eyes. Like I said, that was kind of done with a wet blend. Um, I probably wouldn't recommend that, but I was... It was like the last thing I was doing. I just wanted to get it done. Okay, so now I've got the rust brown on there, and I add some mithril silver. So just trying to get some of the edges and raised areas, that's all. Um, doing the, the water on there, and I'm going to touch up the gold. Obviously, i got some blue that i got to touch up. Now, I actually forgot to do the checkered pattern in here. I was going to do these alternating sort of black and white like they did in White Dwarf. I debated kind of doing it as a gradient from different colors, but I couldn't make up my mind, so I ended up doing nothing. Um, but uh, I might go back and fix that later. And here I'm using those uh, those grays that I showed in the beginning. So it's just uh, one side I started with chaos black, and the other side I started with gray, because one side's supposed to be stormy, and the other side just supposed to be wind. There's the wind side. So I started with a dark gray and went up to almost a white. Whereas the other side to start with black and stopped one step earlier. And now I'm just doing the uh, the Reaper triad here on the skeletons for the turn markers. Or not turn markers, the, the turning markers, the ship's wheel, I think they call those. And these are little objective markers, so I added some uh, GW chainmail and uh, bat up black, wa black wash. And uh, here we are, all done. So I'm just going to walk you through all the different pieces. Um, so there's this, this one here is one of the largest ones. I think it's the largest piece actually. And uh, it's kind of a castle sort of thing. Looks pretty cool. Skulls, of course. Uh, here's this uh, lava field, sort of a volcano with some sort of a sacrificial type uh, altar up there. And uh, I think because of the glare, it doesn't look quite as nice, but uh, I assure you that uh, this looks better in person. Trust me. Okay, and uh, there it is. Okay, so here's another uh, temple sort of thing on top of a skull um, that I, I really should have spent a bit more time filling in that gap there. Um, and it's hard to see these just because of the lighting. There's so much shadow in here, but uh, those turned out okay, I think. There's the back side of it. Um, this piece here is actually, there's you end up with two of them. They're identical pieces of scenery, which is okay because, oops, one too many. Because, um, you know, they're going to get spread out, so it's okay that there's two. Seeing as that's the only double of anything in the box, it's pretty decent. Oh, well, I guess the uh, the ship's wheel. So this one here is like a giant tortoise with a castle sort of thing on top of it. Looks pretty cool. Um, I don't have an overshot to show you, overhead shot, so. Um, some ship uh, shipwreck and some skulls. And uh, some more shipwreck markers. And here's the uh, the sort of beast. I think, I think the uh, the evil side gets to control these. It's kind of neat. Um, better picture there. And here's all the markers. So this this big long ruler that fits uh, these kind of fit all pegged together, and that's your these are each an inch apart. And the way that it's set up is it only will rotate 
sort of the 45 degrees and that's like your allowable turn um, which is the same as this that's 45 degrees right there and that that's how you measure what you're allowed to turn this is your wind marker well actually this is the vortex side the other side is the wind marker and uh, on your board marker there's different you roll dice and that determines which way the wind goes and that affects things it's actually pretty cool um, in-game sort of thing and uh, here's the whole setup uh, again and uh, lots of little scenery things and because of the way the ships work this is going to really affect how the game plays and uh, I can't wait to have my first game now that I have the bloody reaver and the heldenhammer and all the scenery done I'm ready to go with the first scenario anyways hope you enjoyed this scenario or not scenario this scenery tutorial and uh, if you haven't picked up dreadfleet check it out it's pretty cool see you next time